up guys, it's Cody here. Today in this video, we're gonna be talking about everything that Apple has stolen from the jailbreak community and implemented into iOS 13. Now, the thing I want you to think about is, would they have done this if these jailbreak tweaks didn't exist in the first place? I don't know, maybe they would, maybe they wouldn't. A lot of them look very similar to what we have in iOS 13. And obviously the features I'm going to cover are identical in terms of functionality. So is Apple taking a look at all the jailbreak tweaks and then just cherry picking them and putting the good ones all into iOS 13? It's very possible. I highly doubt that Apple came up with all these ideas on their own without ever you know, looking at jailbreak tweaks. It's really hard to believe, but let's get into it. The first big one, let's get out of the way, is dark mode. Yes, everybody's destroying dark mode in the news right now just because it's the new feature that iOS 13 has gotten. Everybody clapped at WWDC when they announced dark mode. We've had dark mode on jailbroken devices for years, literally years. We've been using it, we've been loving it. A lot of people even jailbreak for the reason of using just dark mode. So Apple's doing their best in order to provide these features that people will jailbreak for in the new iOS so people don't jailbreak. So the tweaks that we had that provided dark mode, we had Eclipse, I believe, which was first, then we had Dune, we have Noctis. There's just a lot of tweaks. I mean, there's a ton of dark mode tweaks. Some that were specific to messages, some that were specific to particular applications like Instagram or Twitter, but this is not something new. It's just new to Apple. Next is color flow or colorize. This is a, these are two tweaks that we've had for, again for years. Basically what it does, it takes that album artwork for music players and puts it in the background, blurs it out, makes everything look really nice and it changes. So it's dynamic. Every time it changes a song and it has a different album artwork, then it's gonna look really nice. It gives the entire UI just a completely new look and it doesn't take much effort because all it's doing is taking an image, blowing it up, blurring it out and it looks great. But again, we've had it for a long time, been using it on like iOS 7 jailbreak, I think. So next is a tweak called Weather Vane. This is a tweak that allows you access to your Wi-Fi networks or the available Wi-Fi networks in your area directly in the control center. Same thing for the Bluetooth. Now, obviously this is a new feature in iOS 13. Yes, I'm happy that it's implemented. It's done in a really nice way, but it seems like Apple just kind of took it and put it in iOS 13. Another thing that Apple restricted, which was insanely annoying, is not being able to download anything in the App Store over 200 megs if you're not on Wi-Fi. That's ridiculous. Now, I understand if it's a setting, which now it is in iOS 13, but having the ability to download something over 200 megs, a lot of people have unlimited data. A lot of people have several gigs of data. I have like 30 gigs on my cell phone plan. So if I want to download a couple of, you know, applications that are over 200 megs, I should be able to do that. That's ridiculous. It took up to iOS 13, 13 <laughs> to get the ability to download something over 200 megs. The average application, especially games, are, is way over 200 megs, I would think. There's a lot of applications that are way over 200 megs. But the fact of the matter is, we've had this feature on jailbroken devices with 3G Unrestrictor for I don't even know how long. I mean, a long time. Apple just took that out of the jailbreak box and jump shot at it into iOS 13. Next is a download manager. Are you kidding me? <laughs> we didn't have a download manager on our phones? Like why? Why would we have the download manager on our phones? We need to download stuff. It's the internet. We download stuff. We need files. We need access to those files. Finally, in iOS 13, we get a download manager in Safari. But a jailbreak tweak called Safari Plus, yeah, we've had a download manager for a very long time. It's like the jailbreak developers see the future. They're not even seeing the future. They're, they're finding the needs of the users because people are, people are saying, hey, I need a download manager. Hey, I would really like dark mode. Hey, I really wish I had this feature. Hey, you know what? I wish that I would get a cool little animation when I plug my phone in for the charging indicator. Hey, I wish I could change my battery. People say, okay, yeah, I can do that for you. Sometimes they'll even do it for free. This is amazing. The fact that people are out there creating these jailbreak tweaks for other users, for an entire community, and for free sometimes, a lot of the time, I mean, I just did like a top 75 tweaks that were all free. You can customize your device for free like crazy. I mean, we're talking, we're probably on iOS 16 right now. On, in the jailbreak community. The types of features we have, the abilities that we have is crazy. Apple's just a huge company and, and we, the little guys that they try to crush, and I understand, they, they want security. They don't want people to jailbreak their devices because it's less secure. I get it, 
I get it. But the things that are coming from that freedom, that jailbreak, those features, those tweaks, Apple just yoinks them and they say, look what we made. Next is in control. And this one was implemented into iOS 13, but it actually doesn't have as good of support as in control. So hopefully we're gonna be seeing that, you know, in iOS 14 maybe. So in control basically gives you the ability to pair your uh, PlayStation 4 controller, your Xbox One controller, or your Nintendo controller. So in iOS 13, they only have PS4 and Xbox. But this is a tweak that's been around, not in control, but there have been other tweaks that have been around that do this exact same thing for several iOS iterations. The new volume HUD for iOS 13. This is one that kind of pisses me off because, I mean, how long does it take for you to change the volume HUD in iOS? Apparently it takes forever because that volume HUD was absolutely ridiculous. It was so intrusive. It was right in the middle of your screen. You couldn't get rid of it. It stayed there for like three seconds, depending on how much you turn the volume up or not. And it's right there in the middle. You can't do anything while, it's, while you're turning up the volume. But finally, they have redesigned the volume HUD to where it's not smack dab in the middle of your phone, so when you turn up the volume on something, you just can't you just can't use your phone. But tweaks like Meliore or Sonus or Flashy HUD, these are tweaks that we have redesigned the volume HUD a million times. Let's say we, I didn't do it, I just used it. I've been using <laughs> tweaks that have redesigned the volume HUD for since I can remember, because that was the most ridiculous thing that Apple has done and kept forever. Like it was a hard thing to change. Haptic touch is a new one in iOS 13. It's a feature that basically takes non 3D touch devices and allows you to use a 3D touch like feature. So it gives you the ability to get that, those 3D touch menus and everything. Now this is not something that I used very often. I hardly ever used uh, 3D touch. I did on occasion, but it wasn't like a huge feature for me. But this is something that once 3D touch was released, there was a tweak that did the exact same thing on devices that didn't support it within, I don't even know, two weeks? I mean, it was a really simple concept. It basically, you just took something, like this was the, the front, this was the screen of the iPhone, and you took your finger and you pressed on something, you have a small point of contact. If you press harder, then that point of contact gets bigger. And it's 3D touch, right? That's all you had to do, it's just software. If you see a point of contact that starts small and then it gets bigger, 3D touch, non-supported devices. And the jailbreak tweak was called Peekaboo that did that because you know, the peek and pop and all that good stuff. Next is installing fonts. Now this is one that's, it's, uh, it, they didn't really steal it because it's not even the functionality that you get in the jailbreak tweak. Like the jailbreak tweak is better. So in iOS 13, you are allowed to install fonts, but you can't actually change the font of your device. You have to just use those fonts in like Photoshop or Word, I mean, well, I guess you could use it in Word, but you can use it in uh, Pages. Basically anything that you're going to present or create, you can't just change the font inside of your operating system, which you could do that with Bytefont. Bytefonts, I mean, Bytefont was literally the very first video that I ever created on YouTube. It was Bytefont, to install fonts. I mean, how long is it gonna take to be able to, to customize the iOS font? Probably, you'll probably never be able to do it. But the fact that that was my very first video that I ever created, don't even don't even go watch it because it was, it was horrible. It was like recorded on an iPad, everything was like orange. I don't know why everything was so orange in that video, but it's like vertical, it's really bad. But anyways, very first video ever on YouTube, like six, seven years ago, Apple's like, eh, we'll, we'll give you a taste. We'll give you a taste seven years later of a little bit of font. Go font yourself. Now in iPad OS, you can add widgets to your home screen. Hmm, well, what an original idea. Yeah, we've been doing that forever. Android's been doing that forever too, but we're not talking about Android right now. We're talking about jailbreak tweaks. Zen HTML does that. Um, there were like two other tweaks that I remember that did that, but I can't remember them off the top of my head now. If you guys know, let me know in the comments below. But you were able to add widgets to your home screen. Well, you can't even do it in iOS 13. You can only do this on iPad OS, and you can only use the widgets that are available in your widget view or whatever. So yeah, widgets, iOS 13, wow. Next there's Sidecar. So Sidecar allows you to use your iPad as a second screen for like your iMac Pro or your MacBook Pro or something like that. 
Now this is actually, this wasn't a tweak. This was an application called Duet. Duet was one of them. I think Luna was another one. I don't know, like, I don't know how I would feel about that if I was the developer of those applications and then Apple just took them. But it's like, you made a feature that was so good that Apple was like, I'll have that. Also in iOS 13, everybody's stoked about being able to block unknown callers. Well, you can do that with call blocker. This is in like my last tweak video where you can block unknown callers. Crazy, right? Incredible. It's a free tweak too, by the way. Now those are all the tweaks that I have found in iOS 13. Of course, uh, oh, I don't even know how many were stolen in iOS 12. Is this a bad thing? I don't necessarily see it as a bad thing. The, I, I'm not even mad that they're doing it. The fact that it takes so long for them to do it is kind of more what irritates me because they're features that people love. People will jailbreak their devices. People will make their device less secure in order to get these types of features. Yet it takes Apple forever to implement something like this. And then in a lot of cases, they don't even implement it as well as the jailbreak developers that made the tweak in the first place, that made that feature, that created that feature in the first place. And all these features really just stem from one, creativity, and two, a need from the user base. Apple's trying to do their best to make jailbreaking less and less sexy by implementing these features that everybody loves into their newer iOSs. Now, if they would do that on a much faster timeline, then, I mean, there would be a whole lot less people trying to jailbreak their device. But if they were just maybe a year behind, that would make stock iOS more interesting. But the fact that they're sometimes in the case of like fonts seven years behind, there's always gonna be a reason to jailbreak your device. There's always gonna be new features that people are gonna implement. And the, the, the things that iOS or that Apple implements in their new iOSs, jailbreak developers are gonna create better versions of those features. And then Apple will steal them five or six years down the road. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. That's all I got. If you want to know more about iOS 13, be sure to check the links in the description below. I got like a complete walkthrough of 100 plus features in iOS 13. If you guys want to install iOS 13, I have a video on how to do that. And if you want to see some of the hidden features in iOS 13 that weren't announced at the WWDC or you just don't know about, I have a link for that in the description below as well. Make sure you hit that like button on this video if you enjoyed it. And if you guys want to see more videos from me, make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn those bell notifications on, and I'll see you in the next one.